Good morning, family. How y'all doing? Good, good, good. Real quick, real quick, we want to give you just a little bit of information. If you um, have any questions, any comments, anything that you uh, would like answered, anything that you would like to, uh, any testimonies that you would like to um, submit uh, here to Remnant Church, go to remnantchurchlr at yahoo.com and submit those things to us. Man, we would love to hear from you. We would love to hear your testimonies. We would love to hear uh, any benefits or anything that you heard uh, in any of our message from, from finances to marriage. Uh, we would love to hear from you guys. Um, but we're excited about this morning. Uh, we're going to go in and pray on in and uh, get this thing started. Amen. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to wake up and do purpose, Lord, to wake up and do your will and your way for our life, Lord God. Father, we pray, Father God, that you continue to, to speak to us, instruct us in God. As Lord, we thank you that uh, the fruit from our marriage will be sweet and not sour, Lord. We pray that the fruit from our marriage will, will be able to yield a seed that will bear more fruit, Father. Lord, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for, your, for the honor and the might and the strength that you have, Father God. And we draw on your joy that gives us strength. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. Man, I want to give honor to our pastors, man. Well, I, you know, I, I can say this over and over a million times, man. We have great leadership here at Remnant Church, and uh, I don't take it lightly. Lightly, um, um, and I, I don't want to take up too much time, but man, I thank God for great leadership. Um, that is something that um, that is I hate to say is rare, but it's good when you find it. I'm just gonna say that. Um, I thank God for great leadership, and I thank God for our man and woman of God, Dr. Victor and Dr. Robin Wynn. Man, I love those guys immensely. Um, I, I give honor to, to God. And, um, man, he's been doing some great things. He's been doing some great things. And and um, I, I find myself at moments, and I, I don't know if my wife, my wife had to tell for herself, but I find at moments, I, I you have to tell me that it's a lot of crazy stuff going on. I I don't know if that's right, but but I mean you like you got I mean like I understand the 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 the, the social injustice I understand I understand pending. I understand all of these different things you can't help but notice that right but man God's been doing some grace man God is God God promised at the beginning of, the, of this year that this would be our best year yet it's been exactly that for the Brown household man and I I just thank God for that and I give Him honor and glory um uh so. Yes, uh, we're going to start off here today. Last week, we talked about forgiveness. Uh, no, we talked about forgiveness um, the week prior to. And then uh, last week, we talked about conflict a little bit. We doubled back on conflict uh, because that's what the Lord uh, uh, led us to as well. And we talked about uh, logs on the fire, uh, which is something that is, that is uh, sorely needed because logs on the fire um, can go both ways. It can be a positive. Now you can throw logs on the fire and it can be warmth, it can bring comfort, it can bring light, it can bring um, all these different things. Or you can throw logs on the fire and you can throw too many logs and you can just keep throwing and throwing and burn your whole house down. Amen. Um, but the Lord said last week, he said, what type of wood? He said, the difference is what type of wood are you throwing on your fire? Uh, so I encourage you to go to YouTube, go to Remnant Church on YouTube and, and look that message up. But today... We're going to talk about paying attention. Ooh, we paying attention. It's important, guys, to make sure that you pay attention to your spouse. Now, that, that, that goes without saying, right? That goes without saying. It's important that we pay attention to our spouse. Um, why is that? Because if I don't pay attention to my wife, if she doesn't pay attention to me, then how can I learn her? And how can she learn me? How can she understand what it is that I like? How could she understand what it is that I dislike? How could she understand my interests? How could she understand things that frustrate me, that agitate me? Um, it's important to pay attention, but it's also important to pay attention to yourself as you interact with your spouse. It's important to pay attention to the things that agitate you that they don't even know they're doing. Amen. It's, 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 it's certain things. It's it's this is one thing, um, and I'm gonna be transparent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show my, I'm gonna show my flaw. Y'all don't mind? Okay. This is one thing. My wife she has to do this, right? It's eating. Now now my wife don't smack, so I'm gonna put that out there. She doesn't smack. But when I hear her eat, 
I don't know, it just burns me up. And before I would go, baby, you got to eat so loud. And she would go, baby, I'm just eating. Who is that? That's me. That ain't, that's, that's in my head. That's, that's right here in my dome. She got to eat. And, and, and just because when I hear it, it mess with me, that ain't her fault. It's something in my head that I have to fix. It's, it's something within me that I have to. So if I pay attention to me, then I won't project on her and say, don't eat so loud. You understand? That's 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 what we're going to talk about a little bit this morning. Amen. Maybe we won't put it in there. All right. So Proverbs chapter 18. Let's go there. Proverbs chapter 18. Because we'll do that, won't we? Well, we'll project something off on, on our spouse. And they ain't done. They looking at you like, I mean, I got to breathe. You, you breathing too loud. We walking. We exercising. <laughs> I need oxygen, you know. But anyway, Proverbs chapter 18, we're going to start in verse 20. And we're going we're gonna to kind of uh, camp here a little bit. Now, we're going to have some other scriptures, but I want to kind of really park out here at Proverbs 18 and 20. Um, and it reads, it says, A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of what? His mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Let's look at verse 21. It says, death and life are in the power of the what? And those who love it will eat its fruit. Okay, so the Lord approached this from a different perspective because, you know, a lot of preachers have preached from this, this particular scripture, right? Okay, uh, but let's go back up to uh, Proverbs uh, verse 20, uh, 18 and 20. It says, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. So what it is I'm speaking as it pertains to my marriage, if what I'm speaking into my wife, if what I'm sowing into the, the soul of, of my wife, into her spirit, into her mental, if what I'm sowing is not something I want to eat, then I best not say it. Amen. Amen. Because that, I mean, I mean, I, I I know I know a lot of my a lot of my friends are very strong women, They're very strong. There's only a few things you can say to them without reaping immediately <laughs> that fruit. Okay, and so it's it's it, it, and my wife is is the same way. If, if you don't want to eat that fruit, don't sow it. Now now thank thank God that that now my wife has matured and grown and and we both came to know the Lord. Because you see that it's just not something you want to eat of, right? But but it's 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 it has through the years when I when I am out of pocket, when I am out of line, and I sow fruit that I don't necessarily want to yield or I don't want to harvest, I still get sweet fruit back. Can we can we get anybody ever sow something that, that they said something to their wife and she gave you a sweet response? Mm. Yeah, my face is told. Faith was told. But that response was different. And it was genuine. How do I know it was genuine? Because I know when she faith. Why? Because I've been with her for 14 years. I've been paying attention for 14 years. Right? She's been paying attention to me before. I can't say I cannot say something and not be genuine. And this one don't know. Right? Because she know my mannerism. She know my facial expression. She know when somebody say something and they just don't agree with me. It, it's like she, now she can't get, now I don't want to tell her a sign, but she'll look over at me to check my facial expression. And I've been trying to work on this. I mean, this is one of my things. I've been trying to work on that face of mine. I know pastor been preaching on that for some years. And I, I, I progress, but sometimes when I hear some foolishness, ooh, that face gets tough. We both have to go back and baptize our faces. We do, we do, we do. But this is the thing. Um, in verse 20, it says, A man's stomach shall satisfy, uh, shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, from the produce of his lips, he shall be what? Feel, right? Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat the fruit of it. Okay? Does love bring death? Right. Love doesn't bring death. It brings life. Because God is love. Amen? Amen? Love covers a multitude of sin. Okay? So from her source of love, walking in the spirit, 
walking in love, then even when I'm out of pocket, she can then give me a response that's genuine. Amen? That way she don't reap a response that is then sour. Amen? Amen. So, it, so if we're talking about conflict, if we're talking about paying attention as it pertains, uh, it, even in our conflicts with our spouses, we have to make sure if we, if we know what really ticks our spouse off, you know what button to push. We now now if you've been with your with your boo for an extended period of time, you know what to say and what not to say. Now, I'm sure when my brother and my sister was in the store, they knew what to say. And what not to say. Now, if it, if it was a couple words that they knew not to say and they said it in the store, the ride probably home wouldn't have been his friend. You understand? I'm just saying, you know, to bring some levity to it. Because, man, we're in a time where we're spending a lot of time with each other. And we have to learn how to deal with conflict. And we have to learn how to deal with disagreements. You're, it, I mean, you got to think about it. When people are working, think about both couples working from home having to share space constantly, having to do things with each other more frequently than you probably would wish. You understand? There are certain ways you, when you were doing it on your own, you had your way of doing it. But now you're doing it together. Boo, boo run to the store with me. Queen, run to the store with me. Baby, could you, could you, and y'all go to the store and, 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 and or you go to the, to the, to the car wash. Or you go wherever you're going, and baby's used to doing it this way, and you used to doing it that way. Well, well, well when I do it, I get out fast. Why well, ain't nobody times you? It was just you. You understand what I'm saying? But if you both can work together and compromise and communicate, well, how about this? How about you do that side of the car? You watch that side of the car? I watch this. How about you? You go get this bottom half of the list. And I go get this top half of the list. If you can't do it together, Amen. If, 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 if you can't, if, if, if you can't push the basket and it be peace, then how about I go grab these couple items? I'm gonna go grab the water and the milk, and then I'm gonna bring it back to the basket. Hey, what? What? Because by that time you walking, I'm sure God talking. That's how you walk through that store. God is there. God is saying, Hey, hey, son. Now you know you. You lie to lie. Daughter, you need, to, you need to say that a little more softly. Amen. We have to give time for that third core. Actually, I call it the first core. You got to give time for that first core. You got to give time for him to say, look, cut it out. Why y'all arguing? What you fussing about? Right? If y'all are one flesh, it's not good for you, son, to mess with your body, to sow bad things into your body. I love my sister, um, Omira Beauty. She preached Sunday, I mean Wednesday, uh, Wednesday's message. And she was talking about, um, you know, the eating part of it. And she was saying, what I sow into my body is what my body's going to give back. So if I listen to the instructions from God and I do what he's telling me to do as it pertains to that situation, it's going to yield what? A different result. It's the same thing. A, a husband's as, as the head, if you sow things into your body that's not beneficial, guess what your body going to do? It's going to yield that fruit. You know, we don't want, I know I'm speaking as a husband, I don't want my wife to resent me. I don't want my wife thinking disrespectful thoughts, unkind thoughts, angry thoughts. Why? Because I'm always coming with anger and resentment and bitterness and frustration. That's not what we want. Now, if there's a situation in, in a particular moment where you're frustrated, I hate going to Walmart. I, hate going, I really don't like going to any store. Just say it, we're putting it out there. I don't like doing it. And so my wife understands this thoroughly. But that does not stop her from asking me to go to the store. Right? This is what I have to understand. What is it that my wife needs me to do at the store? Is she just wanting time with me? If that's what it is, I can get that time to her. If, 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 if all she wants is to spend time with me, I can do that. Amen. And, 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 and if the store and people being all around you bother you, then get a little closer. You draw a little closer. 
He didn't look at her face. Look at his face. Baby, you turned that to my hand. <laughs> but anyway, but, that, but, but that's what I'm saying. Let's go to Ephesians 5. Let's do that. Let's go to Ephesians 5. But this is better than I, than I can. We're going to Ephesians 5 and verse, what verse we going to find? 28. You going to read that for us? Ephesians 5, verse 28. In the same way, husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves Sorry. Verse 20, okay. In the same way, husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hates his own flesh, but provides care for it, just as Christ does for the church. Ooh, pause there. In the same way, husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. So I would challenge, I would challenge you with this. If, if I'm not being loving, if I'm not being kind, if I'm not being compassionate and patient with my wife, then it's either one or two things. I'm not doing that with myself or I don't view my wife as a part of me. I don't see us as one. I see her as her and me as me. So if I view her as a part of me, then I mean, I love I love Caleb. I really do. I mean, you know, I, I'm 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 really fine. My wife will tell you I'm fine with me and I'm okay. Um I, I, I I'm good. But now when we got married and I came to an understanding of, of what we were doing when we took vows and, and came into an agreement and we said I do and, and she said I do. I mean, I understood the magnitude of that moment. I share our testimony about uh, our short marriage of uh, in a video we did, um, but our marriage was really short. We had a, we had a little wedding, you know, right there in that, that building over there. And we we I got off work and you know put on a little jacket and and, and, and a shirt and we went over there and said I do I do. Wasn't no reception after. I remember my dad got some Popeyes, met us at the apartment, and we ate. But that ride home. Ooh, it sunk in kind of quick. What did I just do? Because, I mean, the teacher came across the pulpit. You, you knew the magnitude of what you was doing when you come into covenant with somebody. Right? I knew that I had made a promise not just to her, but to God. For better or for worse. Right? So I understood that now... That ain't just paid. Yeah, I remember a testimony that a pastor gave, and and and, and mom, forgive me, uh, Dr. Nguyen, Robin Nguyen, forgive me if, if it. But hey, I remember uh, we was over there, and she and, and pastor was sharing testimony about uh, when Mama would go shopping, and uh, he would get a bill that, that said Mrs. Victor Nguyen. My wife has full authority to do that. Why? Because. That's her name. This, this is officially Kayla Brown. I view her as me. So I got to take care of me, right? Even if sometimes it hurts. So if if I, I give my wife full license, if I'm out of pocket, if I'm out of way, if she sees me getting off in certain areas, correct that, baby, because that's you. When I get off, we get off. You understand? When she get off, I make sure to tell her, hey, baby, you you getting a little loose there. We, we need to come on and get back. Because if she get off, I get off. And I got to make sure that, that we're in alignment. She has to make sure that we're in alignment. If we're both doing that, then that breeds accountability. Amen? And we can't get mad when our spouse does, does that. If we give them full license to do that, then we can't get mad when they do do that. Yeah, because you authorized. You authorize the correction. You authorize that counsel. And if you can't take counsel from your spouse, man, if you can take counsel from your boss better than your spouse, man, you know, that's something that's something that that, that, that you have to work on. Even if they do say it ugly, even if they do say it ugly, now you might have to, you might have to just kind of take it on the chin. And go now, baby. Later on, because you, you, you're gonna be fired up after that word come across, and it's a little heated. 
and it cut a little piece. And you might have to walk off and go, okay, baby, I, I hear you, I got you. I'm, I'm gonna take care of that. Then when you come back later and everything you've been selling, you go, now, baby, the way you said that now was a little, it was a little off kilter. It, was, it wasn't right. It, it, wasn't, it just wasn't right. Amen? Amen. Yeah, um, so going back to Proverbs, we have to, you have to speak life into your spouse and your marriage and knowing that to neglect your spouse is to neglect yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, to neglect your spouse is, 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 is something that, that we can't afford to do, especially not in this time, especially not in this season, because one thing for sure, mm -hmm. if you ain't interacting, if you don't have a, a com communication as much as you want with, with your circle, your inner circle, um, your, your, your wife, your husband, that's your that's your backup. That's your backbone. That's who does life with you. That's when that's when times get rough, man. Makes it a little bit more bearable. That's that's when you need they come through for you the best. Amen. Amen. And so we have to understand that even in times of conflict, even in, in, in moments where 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 we don't necessarily always agree, it's best to pay attention and not just to pay attention to. Uh, our spouse, yes, pay attention to how they reacted and responded to what you said, but more than that, pay attention to how you're feeling. Pay attention to what bothers you. And if they ain't doing nothing to, to make that situation worse, then you need to work on that. You need to self-adjust. You need to make sure that you that you look on the inside and, 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 and over the span of time, if you if you have a problem uh, which with outbursts and different things because of that frustration, then be mad enough and woman enough to apologize. Ap apology is your best tool. Baby, I'm sorry is a good thing. Honey, forgive me is a great thing. Because if you can't, that shows that shows her. Hey, man, I yeah, I did it. I'm, I I apologize. That's not that wasn't my intent. And that shows that you. I didn't mean to hurt you. That's not my intent. That's not what something I want to do. I don't really want to frustrate you. I don't, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, and we're gonna close this out. After a while, there's only so much apologizing you can do. After a while, you got to actually do it. Uh, the, the three years apologizing is about the same thing, uh, sir, ma'am. I think I need you to get that together because. You can only apologize so much about the same thing. It's like the difference between sin and iniquity. Iniquity is doing the same thing over and over, understanding fully what you're doing. We can't treat our spouse in that way. If, if we say we're going to change, if we say we're going to better ourselves in a specific area, then that's exactly what we should do. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's it for today. We're going to continue this next week um, uh, about paying attention, but we're going to come from a different avenue, as the Lord says. But get ready, get ready, get ready. 10 o'clock service is coming up. We're getting fresh manna from the man of God. Um, uh, man, get your, get your biscuit, get your muffin, get your donut, get your coffee and your tea ready. And y'all meet us back here at 10 o'clock. Amen. Amen.